I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Wake up, eat a lot of fruit and cereal to kickstart your metabolism and give yourself energy. How many times have you heard nutrition gurus and fitness experts tell you this? Actually, they're right. Breakfast is indeed the most important meal of the day because it determines the metabolic state of the rest of the day as well as the next one. Okay, good. But it doesn't mean that you should be having it. In fact, you'd be better off by skipping it. Eating first thing in the morning doesn't have any significant benefits. After an overnight fast already, we're in an advantageous state of increased fat oxidation. Our liver glycogen stores have been depleted and we're in mild ketosis. Within a few hours, other metabolic processes and hormonal adaptations will also be conducted. Growth hormone gets released and our insulin sensitivity improves. Also, testosterone increases and our cells go through the repair mechanisms of autophagy. The reason is that the body is in a semi-catabolic state and starts to break down the toxic proteins in it. The stress hormone cortisol is also highest in the morning. It rises at about 6 to 8 a.m. so that we could become more alert for the coming day. This inner wake your ass up system will increase fat oxidation and adrenaline even further. Why not take advantage of this short little boost? It would be a shame to pass out on all these adaptations that happen to us naturally. The stage is set. We just have to get out of our own way. Looks like me and Vincent caught you boys at breakfast. But what if you're hungry? Well, hunger also follows a circadian rhythm. A study found that despite the extended overnight fast, paradoxically, people aren't as ravenous in the morning and they tend to not want much breakfast. You think that the longer they spend fasting, the hungrier they get, but the opposite happens. No matter how long their fast lasted, the participants still reported less desire to eat after waking up. Instead, their internal circadian clock increased their appetite in the evening. And the study found out that, in general, hunger ditches at 8 a.m. and peaks at 8 p.m. This makes perfect sense because after the overnight's fast, we're in mild ketosis and we're using our own body fat for fuel. This gives our body and brain so much energy that we shouldn't even feel hungry at all. It also means that no matter how much whole grain cereal you stuff down your throat once you open your eyes, you'll still get hungry by the evening. The difference is that you have skipped all the hormonal adaptations and you've already consumed a lot of calories during the day. This is something I've definitely noticed in my own hunger signaling as well. I don't feel hungry at all in the morning and I'd much rather not eat anything at all to maintain my mental clarity and fat burning state. But in the past, if I would eat something high in carbs like oatmeal, bread or cereal or something like that, or even fruit maybe, then I'd get extremely hungry again within the few next short hours and I'll be starving by the noon. But if I skip it entirely, then I don't feel any different and my body doesn't crave for anything either. Instead of having breakfast, I do intermittent fasting. This is quite literally the best nutritional hacks out there because it's just so simple. You restrict your eating window into a certain time frame and it gives you so much more freedom. You don't have to worry about meal prep having to eat some junk food, or not even being influenced by hunger. Skipping breakfast will allow you to maintain your productivity and mental sharpness throughout the day. I eat success for breakfast with skim milk. What about second breakfast? Where did this idea come from that small frequent meals boost your metabolism? DEF, the thermic effect of food, is the process by which your body burns calories through digesting it. Every time you eat, your body burns calories to break down and digest what you're eating. About 65% of your immediate energy will be allocated to the digestion process. So it might seem that the more often you eat, the more calories you'll burn through TEF. But it's easy to make false presumptions based on that. TEF has nothing to do with how often you eat, but much rather the macronutrient components of those foods. On a standard western diet, about 10% of the calories in a meal will be burnt off as energy. TEF of protein is 25-30%, to 30%, carbs 6-8% to 8%, and fat 2-3%. to 3%. If your daily caloric intake is 2,500, then you'll still have a TEF of 250, no matter how many meals you have. Okay, for example, 2,500 calories. 6 meals of 420 calories each equals 42 calories burnt per meal. 42 times 6 equals 252 daily TEF. 
four meals of 625 calories each equals 62 calories burned per meal. 62 times 4 equals 248 daily TEF. Two meals of 1250 calories each equals 125 calories burned per meal. 125 times 2 equals 250 daily TEF. So it doesn't matter what meal frequency you choose for, you still burn the same calories through TEF. And this is backed up by studies as well. So meal timing is irrelevant when it comes to body composition. How many calories you burn while eating a meal depends on the macronutrient components of it. But let's continue on with the breakfast myth. There's another false presumption that you gain weight by eating in the evening. Why is that? It's probably based on past experiences. But that knowledge has nothing to do with meal timing. Instead, people gain weight when they have big dinners because they've already spent the majority of the day eating. Having breakfast, lunch and multiple snacks in between will have already made them consume a lot of calories. Now they're already very close to their caloric maintenance and they can easily go over to a surplus and gain weight. Many studies have also shown that people who skip breakfast tend to eat junk food later in the day. But this again is irrelevant when it comes to objective knowledge. People eat junk food because they lack self-control and they don't have any clue of how many calories or in what proportions do they eat. That's just simply winging it randomly. If you don't have any idea of how many calories you eat in a single day or what do you actually put in your mouth, in what proportions, then it's so easy to blame skipping breakfast, you can blame your slow metabolism, your bad genes or even the society, when in reality you're simply making excuses. If you think that you need to have breakfast, then riddle me this, why do you think you need to have breakfast? As we've discussed so far, the obvious reason can't be to prevent yourself from starving to death, and it can't be to kickstart your metabolism or prevent yourself from getting fat. The reason you think that you're gonna starve to death is that your body doesn't know how to use its own fat for fuel. Our adipose tissue can deposit almost an infinite amount of energy. Even the leanest of individuals with less than 5% body fat carry around more than 20,000 calories with them at all times. What about those who are overweight then? Hundreds and thousands of calories all in excess. You get hungry because you can't access that infinite supply source. And this is caused by modern eating habits. Eating too frequently too much, they're eating high carb foods that keep their body on a sugar burning metabolism and also not doing enough intermittent fasting. I'm cereal. I'm super cereal. So as it turns out, the desire to have breakfast has nothing to do with physiological hunger, but more so with psychological hunger. The fear of hunger is almost like a phobia in our society as well, but it's completely irrational. Food is like the society's obsession. It's everywhere, but we don't use it effectively. I don't want you to understand me the wrong way. I love to eat and I love to cook as well, but I like to do it less frequently. And I'm not trying to judge people who eat breakfast either. I just want to tell you that there aren't any significant advantages to it and you shouldn't feel obligated to eat first thing in the morning. And definitely don't be afraid to start skipping some meals. Get in my belly! Come on! What to eat if you do have breakfast? Here's the worst thing you could do. Having breakfast with a lot of sugar, cereal, fruit or a whole grain bagel will put a harsh stop to all of these adaptations we talked about, like fat burning and growth hormone secretion. Tony the Tiger is wrong. It's not great. Eating a lot of carbohydrates will raise your blood sugar levels and causes an insulin response. This not only kicks you out of ketosis, but prevents you from re-establishing it for several days. Of course, you won't gain as much of an insulin response from eating slowly digestible carbohydrates, the, these slow carbs or whole grain cereals. Fiber slows down the rate at which the glucose enters your bloodstream, but at the end of the day, carbohydrates are still carbohydrates. If there's excess glucose in the bloodstream, then your body won't ever consider burning its own fat. But why would you want to even be this fat burning machine? There are many reasons. Being on a sugar burning engine creates this codependent relationship with your biology. You'll eat food that gives you some form of energy, like oatmeal, bananas, but after a while, you'll have completely run out of that fuel and you'll bunk both mentally and physically. Then you need even more and more to maintain those same energy levels. You'll be constantly on this roller coaster ride. Here's what happens. You eat carbohydrates, blood sugar and insulin do their work. Glycogen runs out, your brain runs out of energy and starts screaming for more food. 
the rationale of a sugar burning metabolism is that if there are no carbs inside the body, we'll take it from the muscle cells. You'll get some glucose by turning some protein into glucose, but you'll still remain hungry. And so it continues. Even if you do have a lot of stored body fat on you, you may not be able to access it and utilize it for energy. Instead, you want to be in this fat burning state for as long as you can during the day. The better your body knows how to burn fat for fuel, the less hunger you'll experience, the less mental fog you'll have, the less blood sugar ups and downs you'll get, and the more you can focus on your big three. To stay in a fat burning state, you need to avoid an insulin response. How do you do that? By eating low carb, high fat ketogenic foods, green leafy vegetables that have a lot of fiber like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, kale, spinach, etc. Some protein like eggs, salmon, trout, beef, bacon, pork, chicken. Healthy fats like coconut oil, butter, olive oil, avocados, MCG oil, nuts and seeds. Here are some sample ketogenic breakfasts. One to two strips of bacon, three to four eggs and one cup of spinach. One can of sardines, a handful of nuts, and some kale salad. I didn't want salmon! I said it four times! Physiologically, almost everyone can thrive on doing intermittent fasting and the ketogenic diet as well. It's just that they don't have the knowledge of what they're doing, and that's the reason they crash, because they don't have a plan. At the end of the day, you want to come to terms with what kind of a relationship you want to have with your health, your body, and food. And it doesn't mean that you can't have it all. Is it too much to ask for both? You can be healthy, eat delicious meals, be productive, and, you know, make it easier. Doing some intermittent fasting will help you to achieve it. As the saying goes, you never know what a good meal tastes like until you haven't had it for a long time. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well for more similar videos. Thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay cereal. Stay empowered. I hope now you boys see that this is totally cereal.